I'm late, but what else is new? Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I am so very excited to have you here. It is March 5th today. I know, I'm a day late. I was working on my February mystery challenge video yesterday. Then I realized that I had not looked at the March prompt. So that's what we're gonna do today. Not even wasting any time getting into this because I feel like I do this all the time, right? It's just common knowledge at this point. So we have the National Reading Month achievement. And this one says, unlock this achievement when you complete a Kindle book this month. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All I gotta do is read a book on my Kindle and finish it by the end of March. We'll see what I end up picking for that one. I am currently reading The Perfect Marriage. So far I'm enjoying it, I'm liking it. I'm not very far into it, I would say. I think I'm on chapter 18, I believe. Yeah, the chapters are super, super short in this one, and this one I do believe is on Kindle Unlimited as well. So I will either just finish this one up because I'm not reading it for any type of video, or I will pick another book, I guess. But I think as of right now, since I'm not oop, doing anything with this book, I probably will just continue the rest of this to unlock this achievement. I literally just dropped my Kindle on the floor again. So let's see. Yeah, it is on Kindle Unlimited. I don't know why I made a question about that. I'm, I've been reading it on my Kindle. I'm 26% of the way through, so I'm a fourth of the way through the book right now. So far I'm enjoying it. I'm thinking it's, I think it's pretty good. It's not like, you know, the most intricate storyline, I feel like. It's literally just a guy that has an affair with this woman who is also married. They end up going to his lake house and spending the night together. He wakes up, sees that she's still sleeping, decides to leave her to get back to his wife, and come to find out she was dead. So, yeah. His wife is an attorney, so she's the one kind of handling his case, which is kind of where the intricacy lies. I think from the back of the book, she's trying to figure out whether or not her husband is guilty. He is telling us right now that he's not guilty. So I don't know if he's gonna be like an unreliable, not narrator, but I guess character. I don't know if he's gonna be like unreliable and like maybe he could have done it or if he's like actually telling the truth and like we know off the bat that what he's saying is true and that he didn't actually kill her so they're just trying to figure out who in fact did it i don't really know because on the back here it says but is adam guilty or is he innocent so i don't know if we even know if he's innocent or not i don't know i'm not really sure how that's gonna work but so far i'm enjoying it the chapters are pretty short it's a very quick simple easy Read. I'm kind of flying through it. I'm not haven't I haven't been reading like a ton But what I have been reading I have been able to get through it fairly quickly So I'll just finish up this keep going with it and then give you some updates and let you know what I'm thinking The next mystery reveals itself on the 20th of this month and the hint it says the final chapters So maybe we'll be reading a book with a certain amount of chapters or something in it I don't know. I feel like last time the prompt was something about like playing games with your heart and like as I was going back and editing the video I was like oh well that's probably like a sports romance right no it like had nothing to do with anything that I was saying and it was just like reading on valentine's day so it definitely wasn't that unique it wasn't like a really thought out prompt or anything like that especially with the like hint so I'm starting to think that the hints have nothing to do with any of it and that they don't really matter but who knows, it's still kind of fun to guess. So again, I will be finishing up the perfect marriage for this first achievement, and then I will let you know what I think of it, and then we'll let you know whenever I get that unlocked. So I did recently just finish The Perfect Marriage. I practically sat down and read this in like one sitting, I guess. I finished most of it sitting and then I finished the rest of it just at night reading it. I honestly thought that this one was going to be a lot better than it actually was. This one, it 
it was good in theory. I did like the like premise of it. Man is accused of murdering his uh what is she called? Affair partner. His mistress and his wife ends up taking on the case and helping try to prove his innocence. I thought that that was a very unique concept, but this definitely just didn't play out as great as it sounds like it could. I feel like there's really good potential for it, but for me, it just fell pretty flat. In my head, in the realm of me comparing books and stuff like that, I pretty much put this around the same level as The Silent Patient, but I did figure that this one was going to be a lot better. That's why I read The Silent Patient before I read this. I don't know if you know this, I tend to read the books I'm least excited for first, just that way I can save the anticipation for my other books. So I did read The Silent Patient before I read this one. That one was not my favorite thriller book by any means, but I could see where the plot twist would throw a lot of people for a loop. I did end up kind of guessing it towards the end, but it still was pretty good. I still enjoyed it. This one, the plot twist, I guessed it. I guessed like the secondary plot twist, I guess, pretty much like 50% of the way through the book. Once we were confronted with the evidence, I was like, okay, like this is probably what happened. Did end up happening by the time we got like about 60% of the way through and I'd gone through like most of the things in my head. I was like, all right, this is probably like what actually happened. This is going to be the like ending of the book essentially, which pretty much was minus like a couple details that I didn't really pick up on, I guess. But other than that, it, it for me was a very predictable book. It was not anything that really caught me off guard. There was no like, oh my gosh, like that's so crazy, like shocking ending, which is something that I do really enjoy. Don't get me wrong. I love playing detective and I love guessing what happens in these books. I love being able to figure it out. It makes me feel smart. But at the end of the day, like I think it's really cool whenever it can trip me up. And this one did not trip me up in the slightest. Like I said, we were about 50% of the way through the book. I pretty much already figured that what ended up happening was going to happen. So it wasn't anything just, you know, me on the edge of my seat for the rest of the time. It was more just me trying to figure out like if I'm right, like is, is this correct or is this not correct? Like what? What are we doing? I think for what it is, it's like a decent book. It's definitely not anything that I would recommend to anybody, I don't think. I don't think it was that great. If I know somebody's wanting a book that they can try to guess easily or something like that, I might recommend this. But at the end of the day, everybody's brain's different. So what I think is like super easy to guess, other people might not think is super easy to guess, something like that. But not terrible, just wasn't the greatest, wasn't my favorite. It was just kind of like a mid, like okay book. This makes me appreciate The Silent Patient a lot more. I think I was a little bit harsh on it and mentally I think of it a lot higher than I gave it credit for. So I will say that, retract any of my previous ill statements towards that book. It, I did end up guessing it, like I said, but it was still a good ending for me. I still enjoyed reading the end and I still enjoyed figuring it out and, and, and confirming my suspicions. This one, it confirmed my suspicions and I was just like, okay, cool, great. Like on to the next one. So that was kind of awkward, but it is what it is. I don't really have much to say about this other than just it was all right. Definitely. Uh, Definitely not something that I would be recommending to any of you anytime soon. But that being said, it is March 11th that I am chatting with you about this and the next prompt doesn't come out until the 20th, but I will check back with you then and we will figure out what this last achievement is for this video. You thought I was gonna miss it, didn't you? You really thought, and I really thought too. But here we are, it's the 20th, and we have another challenge to unlock. So our last mystery reveal for this month says Page Sage. And it says, unlock this achievement when you read any three days between March 20th and March 31st. Easy enough. Easy peasy. I'm still currently in the middle of Beach Read. I started reading Emily Henry books for a week. I have never read an Emily Henry book up until like this point. And I still a good chunk of the way through it. Not too far. I don't know. This is taking me a long time to get through this book. I probably will be finishing this up and that probably is going to be for the next three days. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I will try to sit down and knock a bunch of this out just in general. So hopefully I will be able to start another book or something like that for one of the three days, but we'll see. I'll let you know. So far, I'm going to be finishing this up and then hopefully I can get to something else and trying that out as well.
right, Talking Megan is officially back. I read for my three days and I didn't actually tell you what I was reading. I think the last thing that I said or alluded to was the fact that I was gonna be finishing up Beach Read and then going on and picking another book if I needed to. Well, I had ended up finishing Beach Read before I started reading for the three days. I have Beach Read just on my physical copy. So I was kind of reading that, finished that up. Then I decided to pick up The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. I read that for the first two days. I pretty much finished that up within those two days. So I really enjoyed that one. I thought that one was super interesting. The only thing that was kind of like, it was like the topic, I guess. It was basically about this girl and she had a really close relationship with her previous math teacher. He really cared for her. She was kind of struggling. He really wanted to see her succeed. So he took it upon himself to really spend a lot of time with her, tutor her, help mentor her and stuff like that. He ended up taking her home and stuff on several occasions because it would rain and she had to ride her bicycle home. So just trying to be nice. And then also her and her mom would go to supper with him and his wife. So he really just kind of took her under his wing and tried to take care of her and stuff. But she has some sort of issue with like stalking people. So I guess since he really was giving her a lot of attention, trying to help her, aid her and stuff after the loss of her father, she really just took it upon herself to just go to his house and stalk him and just be out there. Well, I think they called the police on her and lo and behold, all of the speculations came out that they were in a relationship, all this stuff, even though nothing was proven, nothing was, you know, actually true. She said, he said, nothing happened. He ended up having to resign because of all the students and stuff that were going to be in his class next semester. None of the parents wanted him to teach their kids. So he kind of got screwed over on that one, <laughs> even though he was just trying to be nice. Main character, I guess there's like two main characters, the male main character, and the female main character, and then she is like also a main character, I guess. It's really just two main female characters. So this year she gets put in Miss Bennett's class for math. She's upset because she knew the previous math teacher. She was really good acquaintances with him. He was like her mentor in the math teaching realm. So she was really devastated that the girl ended up doing all this stuff, which caused him to have to quit. Well, she teaches there with her husband, Mr. Bennett, which he teaches like English or something like that. They're like on the rocks. They have a rocky relationship, very scheduled in what they do. She's not happy. She really just wants him to love her essentially. And he's just kind of not about it. The girl, I can't remember her name. I think it's like, what is her name? I don't know. The student, whatever her name is, I can't remember right now. The student, she takes a liking for Mr. Bennett and despises Miss Bennett. So whenever she and Mr. Bennett start creating some sort of relationship, she starts to decide that she is the one for Mr. Bennett and her math teacher, Mrs. Bennett, is just this cruel evil lady that does not deserve her husband at all. So it's a very weird type thing. I don't love the dynamic between like teacher and student, especially like in high school. I think that that's so weird. Obviously it's more than weird. It's gross. I will note though in this book, in the state that they're in, I don't remember what it was. The age of consent, age of adult, whatever is 16. So that's kind of where I say a lot of times, a lot of books, whenever they say, oh, it's this older person in this relationship with a 16, 17 year old. A lot of times I would just assume that they're in one of those states where 16 is like the age of consent and not 18, kind of like how it is for me. So in my head, 18 is the line. Anything under that is weird, very weird and uncomfortable and not okay. For this book, 16 was kind of that age limit. So for me, it's kind of difficult to put myself in that situation and be like, okay, yeah, it's a different age. It's not like illegal in this realm, but still it's just, it's weird. You know, it's gross. Come on. <laughs> why, why are you into your student like that? You know what I'm saying? It's just not cool. So if you're, you know, if, iffy, finicky, whatever about that and that relationship, I would definitely stay away from this one. I'm not very fond of that myself. Any relations that they had wasn't like descriptive necessarily. So it was a very, you know, it wasn't like spice or anything like that. It wasn't like depicting much. It just kind of like explained some things kind of after the fact. So that's kind of the, the cap on that, but it still was just uncomfortable with their age gap and with the relationship that they had, like the teacher student, that was just 
not cool in my opinion so did not like that but other than that I thought the book was super good I actually did really like it I feel like in the past Rita McFadden books that I've read they don't really have a prologue where they kind of tell you what's going on climax of the story this one had that prologue where it kind of tells you it gives you a glimpse into what's going to happen later on but it doesn't tell you who it's happening with and kind of what's going on like on the first couple pages it's like oh she's standing in a grave by herself that she's digging with a dead body next to her you know what I mean so it's kind of like oh well who is who is this person that we're you know looking at who is who is the one doing this so it's kind of like who are we talking about who is this person that's standing out here doing all this stuff like what who's the dead person it's just a lot of unanswered questions but it still kind of I guess draws you in I don't know I don't really understand that because I would rather just wait and see it as it's unfolding but also it's not that big of a deal because I read it and then pretty much forget about it so by the time I get to the climax I'm totally forgotten about the entire prologue that I just read about the dead body so yeah I actually did really like it I really just wanted to pick up a quick thriller book I think in terms of guessability it wasn't too difficult to guess it was very it was kind of something that I would have saw coming I think there was multiple plot twists throughout the story probably at least like four and I don't want to say like heavy plot twists a lot of it was just like bits of information that came to light where you're like, oh crap, like, oh my goodness. I don't know if you would consider that a plot twist. I kind of put it all in the same thing because it kind of is one of those shock factor find outs, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I really enjoyed it though. I thought it was pretty good. I think as of right now, that's probably one of the most enjoyable Freedom McFadden books that I've read so far. I think Never Lie, is that what it's called? I think that one is my favorite as of right now, but I would say that the teacher's a pretty close second runner up, if not like kind of on the same level. I don't know. It was really good though, but part of me like, part of me thinks that I need to give it like a lower rating than what I'm thinking in my head, but I don't know why. I don't know if it's just me trying to be stingy with it or if I just don't actually have my feelings set in stone. I don't really know, but I'm sure come time for me giving you the wrap up, which I'll probably talk about a little bit later today and then put that video out after this one. You'll see what my thoughts were fully and what I decide my rating is going to be. But until then, I don't really know yet. I'll figure that one out. I'll still sit here and ponder on it. Then I'll let you know in that video. But then secondly, for that third day, I picked up The Coworker, also by Freedom McFadden. I have just been struggling to figure out what to read. I can't do it to save my life. I don't know what I want to read. Nothing is calling my name. Nothing is screaming at me. I just... I don't know. It's it's really it's really difficult for me as of right now. I'm looking at my Kindle, nothing sounds good. Looking at my bookshelf, nothing looks great. So, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> not fun. But I did pick this one up yesterday. You could see I was out riding, not riding. I wasn't riding dirt bikes, but Nick was out riding. I went with him and I started this one while I was out there. I'm not that far into it as of right now. I'm only 20% through the book. I'm on page 70 and my Kindle I do think that it's fascinating so far. I had a difficult time getting into it because I just couldn't focus on it while I was out there. But as I've really just kind of gotten into the story, it is a little bit more interesting. I don't want to say that I think it's more interesting than the premise of the teacher, but I think that it is still pretty good so far. I don't know as of right now if I'm going to enjoy this more than the teacher. I feel like I might not. It just depends on the way that the book goes, the direction that they take it. Not quite sure, but I definitely didn't get that far into it, especially yesterday. I was probably like 10%, I would say, maybe 15%, something like that. I'm not mad about it so far. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking it. I'm very excited to see what happens. I normally enjoy Freedom McFadden books. I think even if I don't care for them that much, they're still good, you know? They're still entertaining, still have some wow factor to them. Even if I guess it, I'm still like, oh, okay, like, yeah, that was cool. You know what I mean? Hopefully I'll get through this and then maybe I'll get out of a reading slump and I'll be able to find something else to read. But that is the March Kindle Mystery Challenge for you. I don't even remember what the first challenge was. I'll have to look it up. Okay, so the first one was for National Reading Month and that one was basically just unlocking the achievement after I read any book during that month. And then this one, of course, was reading three days between the 20th and the 31st of March. And we went ahead and got the little achievement for that one. So that's super cool. I'm very excited about that. We ended up accomplishing it, thank goodness. But I guess that's it. That's all I got for you. These are all the books that I read for the Kindle Mystery Challenge. I unlocked all of the mysteries. Hallelujah. They weren't that difficult, but I am very excited to get into the April ones. I think it's always fun just getting new ones for a new month. Also, it's going to be springtime, so there's going to be 
hopefully more exciting challenges, stuff like that. Hopefully more seasonal stuff. That's the goal. That's what I always like to see. A lot of uniqueness. I think that's very fun. But if you have read any of these books that I read in this video, let me know what you thought about them. Let me know what your opinions were. If you liked them, didn't like them. Let me know if you agree with my opinions. Literally just the whole nine. Everything that, that you want to say, just leave it down below in the comments. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day and I hopefully will get to see you in the next one. See ya. Mm -hmm.